In this video, we're going to talk about aortic stenosis. This is an overview and introduction. Aortic stenosis is characterized by obstruction of the left ventricular outflow, resulting in a decrease in cardiac output. Aortic stenosis can be mild to moderate and is usually asymptomatic. But it is always important to monitor the stenosis that occurs in the aorta. All the valves of the heart can be heard most prominently in certain areas across our thorax. The aortic valve is best heard in the right second intercostal space, parasternal, the pulmonary valve, left second intercostal space, parasternal, the tricuspid valve, left fourth intercostal, parasternal, and then the mitral valve, left fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular. The pulmonary valve is made up of three leaflets. The mitral valve, two leaflets. The tricuspid valve, three leaflets. And the aortic valve, three leaflets as well. Out of all the heart valves, the mitral is normally the only valve with two leaflets. And that is why it is also called bicuspid. During the cardiac cycle, when the aortic valve is open, the pulmonary valve is open as well. And when both these valves are open to pump blood out of the heart, the tricuspid and mitral valve close. This is what a normal aortic valve looks like when it's opened and when it's closed. The heart with a stenotic valve cannot pump blood efficiently. Here is an open and closed aortic valve with stenosis. Even when the aortic valve is open, the stenosis results in a decreased blood flow. With decreased blood flow, there is decreased cardiac output. Because of the decrease in cardiac output, we get the following three cardinal signs and symptoms of aortic stenosis. These are dizziness or syncope on exertion, dyspnea on exertion, and exertional angina. On examination, we can feel a slow rate of rise of the carotid arteries, which can be felt around the neck. Normally, the carotid pulse rises fast but in aortic stenosis, the carotid pulse is slow and weak. On auscultation of the right second intercostal space, parasternal, we have reduced intensity of the second heart sound, which is the sound when the aortic and pulmonary valve close. Drawing it out here, we normally have two heart sounds, S1 and S2. S1 is your AV valve closing, which are your tricuspid and mitral valves. And S2 is when your aortic and pulmonary valves close. We are listening to the right second intercostal space murmur in aortic stenosis. But first, looking at the normal. We have a first heart sound and then a second heart sound. Drawing these sounds out, we can divide it into three things. S1 is when your AV valves close and your blood is in the ventricles. The ventricles begin to contract. Between S1 and S2, your ventricles are contracting so hard that it pushes blood through the aortic valve. S2, your aortic valve closes again allowing the ventricles to fill back with blood. Thus, we can say that between S1 and S2 is systole, when the ventricles are contracting, and from S2 to S1 is diastole, when the ventricles are relaxed and filled back with blood. In aortic stenosis, the murmur we hear begins at S1 when the atrioventricular valve closes, and then we hear the aortic valve open. The blood is being squeezed through the aortic valve slowly, and so we get this greater turbulent flow 
until the ventricles relax again and the aortic valve closes. We call the aortic stenosis murmur a systolic click crescendo decrescendo murmur or ejection systolic murmur. Again, the AV valve closes, ejection click as the aorta valve opens, turbulence through the aortic valve increases, then decreases, and then the aortic valve closes. It is important to know that this murmur can radiate to the carotids. There are three major etiologies of aortic stenosis. One is congenital abnormal valve, a unicuspid or bicuspid aortic valve. Two, calcification of the aortic valve usually with age. And three, a rheumatic valvular heart disease. Here is an abnormal aortic valve which is bicuspid. Here is a calcified aortic valve resulting in stiffening. A rheumatic valve forms scar tissue leading to stenosis. Investigations include an ECG which may show left ventricular hypertrophy. Cardiac catheterization can be performed through the femoral artery or radial artery where the catheter is fed through till it reaches the aortic valve. Here is a catheter approaching the aortic valve. The catheter allows visualization of the aortic valve. Transthoracic echocardiogram can also be performed and is gold standard for looking at valvular heart diseases. Management of aortic stenosis includes surgical valve replacement or repair. A valve replacement can be mechanical or bioprosthetic. There are weaknesses and strengths between the two. Mechanical valve replacement is often used for the younger people because it lasts longer. Use of short long-term anticoagulants and antibiotics may be necessary following surgery for those who are susceptible to infections and complications. For patients unable to undergo a valve replacement, there is balloon valvuloplasty where the valve's foramen is dilated and transcatheter valve replacement can also be performed following a balloon valvuloplasty.